Blitz on Two is sponsored by Charleston County Parks, Charleston Heating and Air, Morgan and Morgan, and Steen Enterprises. Oh boy, there's no need to check your watch because you see us standing here, so you know it's that time again. I'm Mark Morgan. It's the Blitz on Two, another terrific slate of high school football games right here once again. Yeah, welcome in. I'm Dan Fanning. The second to last week for the regular season. Region championship still in the line. The de facto region title up for grabs tonight in our game of the week between Cross and Baptist Hill in Class 1A Region 8. Now Baptist Hill had had Cross's number lately. The only number you need to know is one. And that will be Carmelo Montgomery. First drive of the game, Mello takes the quick pitch in for six. Trojans lead 6-0, and he is just getting started. Bobcats first drive, high snap. QB can't corral it, but Montgomery can. Number one, races 55 yards the other way for the scoop and score. Cross goes up 14 to nothing. Minutes later, if some Carmelo is good, more is better. Jet sweep, and it's midnight in Montgomery. Second rushing TD of the contest from Allen Jackson makes it 21 nothing. Cross, my word. Surely he's done for the night. Think nope. again. Not one, not two, not three, but four touchdowns wow. in just the first quarter for Carmelo Montgomery. And we go to the board. Wow, Yikes. a score that I speak for the both of us when I say we did not expect this. Cross hammers Baptist Hill 54 to nothing, and that is not a typo. But after a 7-0 start, West Ashley has fallen in back-to-back -back weeks. Their opponent is heading in a different direction. That's right, Dan. Fort D has won three in a row entering tonight's play. The Patriots seemingly finding their mojo as we head down the stretch of the regular season. Let's check out the highlights. Oh, ground level. Here we go, baby. Senior night at West Ashley. 4D first drive at Zion Reynolds. Picks up where he left off last week, rumbling in to give the Patriots an early 7-0 lead. The Wildcats will answer. Javen Peterkin, where's Javen there? He's somewhere in that pile, muscles his way in. We are tied at seven. Second quarter action now. Reynolds isn't done. Second TD of the half, up the gut, 20 yards, nicely done, 17-7, Fort D. Minutes later, the North-South selection, Zoltan Osborne, friend of the show, finds Multi Snyder, the two hook up for the pretty TD to make it 24-7. I just like saying Multi Snyder, and to the board we go. It's official, Fort D is on a roll. Your final, 51-7. Uh, kind of like Texas, can we say that they're back? Yep. Anyway, speaking of back, well, then again, I guess they never left this season. Somerville, the wave continues to roll. They beat Ashley Ridge in a battle of Somerville, 28-13, your final. And we had some technical difficulties there. That's why we were not able to bring you the Somerville highlights, so no emails, please. Yeah, yeah. that is right. <laughs> Everybody's still doing the Trojan Rumble as ah. J.I., you know, still undefeated in region play. I still have yet to see Dan or anyone else doing the uh, Trojan Rumble, but since losing to Cane Bay, remember on that walk-off field goal, the Trojans, three wins in a row, travel to Hilton Head tonight. Let's see how they did. Seahawks running out, coming right at you, but it would be the Trojans doing the running from the very start. A Montre Scott around the right side, and as my man Dan would say, he says peace to the defense. A long TD run puts J.I. on the board, seven zip. A little later in the first, Junior Maxwell strikes up the band. He tries the left side, and it's the right side. Another long run for six. Trojan starting to run. He just keeps running, man. That's what this team is. James Island keeps on trucking and rumbling. Yeah, you better get documentation of that. Everybody's dancing to the board. We go. J.I., also one of the hottest teams in the low country. 45-8 is your final. At John Fulmer Field in Goose Creek, the oh. Gators taking on Wando at half. The Gators already up 27-15. Kickoff caught here by Landon Bryant, who started to make a run for it, but tackled there by Jordan Turner, who I think is also going to the north-south game. A little later, while the Warriors fumbled the ball, it was grabbed by the Gators' Aaron Bryant, who ran it all the way back for the scoop and score. Oh, that boy. made it 33-15 Goose Creek. The extra point, not good though. Just not Wando's night, according to Raymond Owens or the fans there on the sideline. Drew Moore, no relation, throws it long into the end zone to the waiting hands of Evan Daniels. That po pass was on point like Taylor Swift's new CD. Oh, wow. I haven't listened to it, but I heard it's great. Topical. Anyway, Topical. another TD 
made it 45 14 Goose Creek and we go to the board as the Goose Creek Gators victorious wow. 53 34 50 spot and for the fourth year in a row the Creeks are rising as they are region champs. All right, let's head up to Monk's Corner now. The highlights keep coming. Berkeley Stags hosting the Stratford Knights. Love it when they break through the banner. And here we go, second quarter. Stags saw their chance. Quarterback McCray triggers through the ball across the field, intended for Tavon Frazier, but instead went into the hands of Stratford's Bryson Pelham, who picks it off for an interception. Then the Stags, another shot at it. Actually, this is the pick right here. I got a little ahead of myself. So wind that back, Christian. Thank you. Stags now take another shot at it, just yards from the goal. Driggers hands off to Jovan Wigfall with the first touchdown of the game. At the half, the score was Berkeley ahead 6-0. What a rivalry this has been over the years. These two teams have been playing forever. To the board we go. Slugfest, 12-7. Berkeley comes away a winner. And we're just getting started here on the Blitz on 2. We're going to step away for just a quick second. That is right. More highlights and scores from across the low country. Hanahan and Phillip Simmons, a big game in Class 3A. Also, Lucy Beckham back at home. Could the Bengals stay in the win cup? Find out when we come back. That was a dramatic pause. Welcome back to the Blitz on two. I'm and Mark Morgan seen. and seen the hits just keep on coming. Yeah, that is right. A big <laughs> contest in class 3A is Philip Simmons in the Hanahan. Try to keep up with Buford at the top of region three. I guess class set three region eight. Anyway, we go to Hanahan. I think Lisa uh, Smalls is on the sh uh, shooting tonight because yep. she loves that shot. Anyway, KJ Asbury takes the handoff on fourth down and swarmed by a host of Hawks defenders. Hanahan takes over Hawks trying to move it now. As you see, a pink out for breast cancer awareness. Kevon Rivera, the bell cow for the Hawks. Some tough yards. But I think the Hanahan Hawks turned it over as well. That was a defensive struggle early on. Jaden Cummings tries to make something happen, but he is sacked as he tries to get outside as Phillip Simmons brought their defense with them. Second quarter, big play right here. Phillip Simmons, special teams, blocks the punt. Where is it? There it is. Iron Horses take over in great field position. Two plays later, Isaac Schiff. Takes it, does the rest, rumbles and to the end zone. That makes it 6 0. The PAT was no good, but have no fear. The special teams is here. Later in the second, one more time blocked. How about it? It's like Beamer Ball. Phil Limbo calling the special teams. It is good. They throw up the, I guess, I don't know what you call the, uh, the officials throwing up the touchdown, the uprights, what have you. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Michael Spignardo recovers in the end zone. And we go to the board. How about it? Phillip Simmons, the Iron Horses, an impressive win on the road as they shut out the Hawks 22 to nothing. Now back to 4A, Collington County making the trip up Highway 17 to battle with the Bengals. That's right, Dan. After losing a roadie against May, May River rather three weeks ago, Lucy Beckham has beaten Bluffton and Hilton Head. Check out the highlights from Mount Pleasant tonight. I was shooting this, Dan. I want you to grade my shooting. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. Uh, C plus. I, okay, thank you. Uh, Punter having some issues right there for Collison County. Bad snap. He is smothered. Bengals take over. They're fired up and they take advantage. Next play handoff to Malachi Coakley. 17 yards for the score. PAT no good. It was good, excuse me. 7 0. Lucy Beckham on top. On the ensuing kickoff, watch Sean Winfield. Takes it at the goal line, makes some nice moves, shows some speed on the outside, returns it 30 yards before he's finally knocked out of bounds. But the Cougars couldn't keep it going at that point. Bengals strike again. Chalmers Ballard looking downfield for Malachi Coakley. And there he is. Look, see, Coakley, catch, pile on, ref, what are we doing? Touchdown, 37 yards on the play. Touchdown, Bengals, 14 zip. Lucy Beckham at that point. This game was tied at 14 at the break. We go to the board tight in the second half. Bengals prevail. They've won uh, three in a row now. 31-21 your final. All right, we're grading on a curve. I'll give you an A. Uh, Oceanside oh, and thanks, Bishop man. England, 24-0 OCA. Third quarter, Will Virgilio fires in the flat to Zach Hageden. Zach fights for eight yards for going out of bounds. Same drive, Virgilio calls his own number. He goes up the middle for 10 tough yards. Landshark still driving the pass once again to Hageden. A nice 10-yard chunk as they're just Eating up the clock right there. Then Borgilio calls his own number. Where is he? He's a hard guy to find. There right? he is. Uh, hard guy to find. Somewhere. Will Borgilio dials up six. The there quarterback keeper takes us out and also the BE defense. But a big night for Oceanside. 
this afternoon, I guess this evening down at the Citadel as they hold on and what you know it for a third game this evening. The Land Sharks join the shutout crowd. They blank BE 36 zip your final. Stall and Kane Bay. I love the banner shot, Dan, and here we go. Waiting for it, waiting for it. I made it a little too long when I cut this. TV terms. Here we go. Opening kickoff. Stall kicking off to the Cobras. That is Brody Roberts. Brody Roberts is our guy tonight, Dan. He takes it on his own 21. He's gone. Count them. I'll count them for you. 79 yards for the touchdown. PAT good. And just like that, Kane Bay's up 7 0. Stall trying to get something going. Zeme Schuler right here will take the handle. This is a nice little run. Darts outside, makes a couple moves, shows some speed. 25 yards. Oh boy, get out of the way. We're safe. Everybody's okay. That drives Stall though. Deontay Wheeler of Kane Bay shows his wares right here. 21 yards around the left side for the touchdown. 14 zip. Cobra's on top. Kane Bay with it again. Crowd whooping it up and rightfully so. Here goes Wheeler one more time. Where is he? There he is. And he's in the end zone again. 25 yards for the touchdown. 21 nothing Cobras. This one really got out of hand early. Your final, Kane Bay 65-18 over Stahl. In the skeezer rinks downtown, the Cyclones of Portugal down 10-7 at the break to Cardinal Newman. PG driving to start the second half. Tony Brown swings it out to John Settle, and he does not settle as he fights for some tough yards. Tony caps off the drive, plowing into the end zone, and what can Brown do for you? Porter Gal goes up 14 to 10, but the Cardinals of Cardinal Newman respond. A.J. Reyes up the middle, bounces off tackles, wow. races all the way down the sidelines, and he is good. God. That's a nice run. Man. In the words of John Ward, give him six. Wow. Then AJ with some love for the camera on the sideline. <laughs> this, is mine. this is mine. But what I tell you, they went up 17 14, but the victory was the Porter Gal Cyclones as we go to the board. And Porter Gal, a nice job of defending home turf as they knock off Cardinal Newman 28 to 24. Let's show you some action from Thursday night. District 4 Stadium. That's North Charleston taking the field, hosting Buford. Cougars with it as we pick it up. Opening drive to Shannon. Hunter takes the handoff, fights for seven tough yards. That drive stalled, though. That was the story of the night for North Charleston. As we quickly move ahead, Eagles first play from scrimmage. That was Daryl to pass to Colton Fairs. Back to the pass. He goes 25 yards. A little trickery before he's finally knocked out of bounds. Then in the red zone. Watch the swing pass to McLeod Reichel. He will die for the pylon, knocks over the pylon. Ref, ref says you're not in. Well, that led to this short run by Casey Fields. Touchdown, Eagles. PAT was good, 7-0 Buford. Later first quarter to pass, hits Reichel again. A quick five-yard strike for the touchdown. 14-0 Eagles at that point. They roll on Thursday night, your final from District 4. Buford, 48-8. And one final time out here on the Blitz on 2. That is right. A look at some more of the scores that we missed on the other side of the break. Also, our play of the night. We saw it just a few minutes ago. We'll see what it was when we come back. Welcome back to the Blitz on two. A few scores for you. Lake Marion beat Academic Magnet 27 to 7 tonight and Aner big over Georgetown. Man, St. John's 19 military Maddox sits. Woodland falls for the first time this season by six. Barnwell 34 to 28. Checking out some more scores. Skiza now. A uh, tight one. First Baptist beats Florence Christian 27 26 and Pinewood Prep doubles up Thomas Hayward. As we go, continue to look at the, some scores. Buford Academy 2019, College and Prep Falls for the first time this season. Northside Christian 32, Palmetto Christian 8. A couple more to look at. Williamsburg Academy still unbeaten over Lee Academy 28-6 and St. John's Christian Big over Dorchester Academy. Now we go back to our play of the night. Opening kickoff, stall kicking off to Kane Bay's Brody Robertson. 
How about it? Number two says peace to the defense. Brody Roberts, 79 yards the other way as Kane Bay is off and running, no pun intended. Brody Roberts, congratulations. You are our play of the night. Quick college football note, the Newberry Wolves are 6-1 after a victory over Catawba last week. And in that win, former Stratford star Mario Anderson, 25 carries, 246 yards and 4 TDs. Anderson told me that he and his Charleston area teammates appreciate the support they receive from the low country. You know, my family, you know, they're real big supporters and the, the low country in general. Um, it just, it's just, it's a loving environment back at home, man. Every time... You know, I go back at home, you know, that's all we talk about is football and how we doing everything. And it's just it's very supportive and loving and it's, it's no better feeling than that. Uh, I definitely have a great relationship with all my former coaches at Somerville. Um, every week, you know, my former teammates and friends back in the low country and family are just texting me. They're just they're so excited about the success we're having that I'm having. We've been recruiting there for 20 years and we've been signing kids out there forever. You know, kids that played here for me are now head coaches in Charleston. So uh, I think we've got a good thing going there. You see some great football in the low country, kids that love the game. And that's important to us here. You know, just do you love the game? And you see that with kids coming out of Charleston. All right, and that dovetails nicely into the weekend for college football. Dan, you're heading to Columbia. We are heading to Columbia now. Texas A&M has won eight straight against South Carolina, so we'll see if the Gamecocks can kind of uh, reverse that train. Also, Clemson, a big game at high noon against Syracuse. The orange of Syracuse versus the orange of Clemson, which orange will reign supreme. There you go. That's all tomorrow. Big college football weekend. Keep it here on News 2. I'm Mark Morgan. Thanks for being with us. That's right. I'm Dan Fanning. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.